Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topics are geometric series and infinite payoffs. Last time, we looked at discounting the future. For example, if I have an infinite stream of x values, where x is just some number, then today I get x, tomorrow I get something slightly smaller than that, delta times x, after that I get something smaller than delta times x, delta squared times x, and so forth. Having a payoff written like this really isn't very useful. After all, in game theory, we need to compare the payoff for one strategy to the payoff for another strategy to see which one is better. And when we have dot 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 floating around, we can't explicitly compare one payoff to another. So the goal here is going to be removing that dot dot dot. And fortunately, there is a solution to this problem. That stream that you see on your screen right now is known as a geometric series. And geometric series have some very nice convergence properties, which we're going to exploit. And to show you how we can exploit them, rather than thinking about the infinite stream, let's think momentarily about the sum of the first n payoffs, and then eventually we'll get back to the infinite stream. So rather than having just a dot dot dot, we finish off with something solid, we finish off with a delta to the n minus 1 times x. That is the representation for the first n payoffs. What we're curious to know is if there's a simple way of writing that. Rather than having a whole bunch of terms, a whole mess of n terms, is there some other way we can write this, say, called s, that will allow us to more easily play around with that payoff? The answer is yes, but getting to there involves some weird and funky steps. So bear with me as I now do some weird things, and just trust me that by the end of this, it will all turn out to be a really good idea. The rules of algebra allow us to multiply both sides of an equality by the same number and preserve an equality. So for example, if we multiply both sides of line 1 times delta, then we get what appears now on line 2. So we have instead of s a delta times s, instead of an x we have a delta times x, instead of a delta times x we have a delta squared times x, and so forth. Now, that doesn't seem like it does anything useful for us, but actually, it does. Notice that the top line and the bottom line on the right sides share a lot of terms. And also, recall that the rules of algebra say that we may subtract the same value from both sides of an equation to preserve the equality. So, there is a way, using that subtraction rule, we can get rid of all of these overlapping terms. Imagine that we subtract the left side of the first equation from the left side of the second equation, and the right side from the right side. Essentially, we're doing something that looks like this. Well, this preserves the equality. Because delta times s is equal to delta times x plus delta squared times x and so forth, all the way through delta to the n times x, the left side, s minus delta times s is equal to what we have gotten on the right as a result of eliminating all of those overlapping terms. All we have left is an x and a minus delta to the n times x. That gets rid of all of that junk in between and still preserves the equality. So suddenly, instead of dealing with n number of terms, we're left with something that looks rather simple. Obviously, we're not done, though. What we really care about is figuring out what s equals. Remember that s is the sum of the stream of n payoffs that we cared about originally. So let's work to solve for that s. We can undistribute on both sides of that equation. So we can pull out an s and have a 1 minus delta on the left side, and we can pull out an x on the right side and have a 1 minus delta to the n in parentheses on the right. And from here, we can very easily solve for s. Remember, s, again, is the sum of the first n payoffs. All we need to do is divide by 1 minus delta, and we get our solution. The sum of the first n payoffs equals x times 1 minus delta to the n divided by 1 minus delta. That's actually pretty remarkable. Remember that previously we had n payoffs. So you could have something arbitrarily large. You could have something like a billion payoffs n equals a billion, 
and you don't have all that much to write down. The value of that, the sum of that stream of payoffs is something very simple. All it takes is that fraction at the bottom of your screen. From here, we can go back to asking the question about what the infinite stream is equal to. We can do this by taking a limit. What happens as n goes to infinity in this sum of the first n payoffs? Well, all we have in that fraction with an n is a delta to the n. That's the only place that n appears. Think about what's going on if you raise an exponent, or rather you raise a delta value to n as n goes to infinity. For example, delta could be 1 half. Delta is just some number between 0 and 1. If you multiply 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, what happens? Well, you get 1 half, then 1 quarter, then 1 eighth, then 1 sixteenth, then 1 over 32, 1 over 64, 1 over 128, 1 over 256, 1 over 512, and so forth. You'll notice that's going closer and closer and closer to zero. And in fact, in the limit, as a number between zero and one goes to infinity, when you raise it to that exponent, that goes to zero. And so you can cancel out that delta to the n entirely which means that as n goes to infinity, the sum of the infinite sequence of payoffs, that series of payoffs, I should say, is very simple. It's just x over one minus delta. You take the original payoff, the payoff that you get every single stage, and you divide it by one minus delta, and that is the sum of an infinite stream of those payoffs. That's rather remarkable. We have an infinite stream of payoffs and we can write it with just three numbers. We're going to be using this formula a lot as we go forward, but there are some other formulas that you should know about as well when it comes to trying to solve uh, these repeated games. For example, the sum of an infinite stream except for the first payoff is equal to delta times x divided by 1 minus delta. I'm not going to prove that to you, but in fact this is very easy to show Maybe an exercise you might want to do after you watch this is to figure out why the sum of an infinite stream except for the first payoff is equal to that. Another one that's good to know, the sum of an infinite stream of payoffs, but just the odd periods. That's going to be equal to x, that baseline value, divided by 1 minus delta squared. And the last one I have for you is what happens if you have an infinite stream, but just the even periods. And that's going to be delta times x divided by 1 minus delta squared. These last two payoffs, the payoffs for just the odd periods and the payoffs for just the even periods, that's a little bit more complicated to work out, but that's a good challenge for you, something you might want to try out. But regardless, that leaves us with nothing else to talk about when it comes to geometric series. You now know how to be able to quickly calculate an infinite stream of payoffs. And so very soon we're going to be able to apply this lesson and try to figure out what payoffs look like in an infinite prisoner's dilemma. But before we do that, I have a tip that will make solving these repeated games a lot easier. So we're going to learn about that in the next lecture on the one-shot deviation principle, and then we'll look forward towards solving these infinite horizon games. I hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you next time. Take care.